Hello everybody, this is Mr. Hebner. Um, just wanted to go over the virtual lab with everybody. It's currently nap time, so I figured it'd be a good time to do this video. Unfortunately, I only have one of the three that are actually napping, so I apologize in advance. Um, all right, so I found this really cool virtual lab for finding the amount of vitamin C that is in various substances. It's the lab that we do in class. And what we do is we look at different vitamin C tablets, different brands, and we figure out basically how many milligrams of vitamin C is actually in them. We can kind of compare it to what they actually say on the label. Um, we then take various fruits, more specifically oranges, and we uh, do a whole titration and through that figure out how many milligrams are of vitamin C are in oranges and then we do extension and do it with like carrots, strawberries, whatever vegetable or fruit that you'd be interested in. Unfortunately, we um, can't do that because um, we're virtual. So I did find this really cool lab and instead of oranges, they're focusing on peaches and instead of vitamin C tablets, they just have a standard solution of uh, the vitamin C also known as ascorbic acid. So uh, here's the website right there. And you go to it. We got some great little uh, directions. It's actually really confusing. So I spent an hour tweaking and uh, working with it and I finally figured it out. And that's why I'm making this video. So I'm gonna basically do the lab here with you. So if you're stuck, you can use this as a tutorial. All right, so essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be titrating the ascorbic acid uh, solution that's in the, in the peach or in the standard uh, solution, also known as the vitamin C ascorbic acid. And uh, we're going to be taking potassium iodate. And it's basically uh, you're going to have to take a stock solution solid uh, and dissolve it in distilled water virtually. And uh, that's going to be in your barrette you're then going to drop it dropwise into your solution of um, basically vitamin C or ascorbic acid, peach, whatever that may be. And you're also going to have um, some potassium iodide in there. You need some catalyst uh, hydrochloric acid, two molar. Um, the other thing is some starch. It's always tricky making the correct uh, starch solution, but when it's virtual online, it's right every single time, which is one nice part about it. Um, I'll kind of go back to that later, but essentially the potassium iodate reacts with the uh, potassium iodide uh, to form actual iodine, and that iodine will then react with the ascorbic acid to form um, iodine ions, which then attach and uh, form a complex with the starch solution creating a pretty blue color, and that is the end point, the blue color. All right, so these directions are fairly vague and fairly uh, straightforward. So the straightforward part is um, most, most everything except for this initial part. You kind of need to know the initial part to be able to do everything. So I have a couple of lab um, sources that I'm going to be giving you, but I'm also going to give you just a simplified version that I just typed up for you for your benefit. So one of the resources is the actual lab that we do in class entitled Analysis of Vitamin C, and it has basic, it's the same lab. And we started with a potassium iodate 5 times 10 to the negative 2 molar, although uh, I got another lab resource that you can um, pull from in which is 0 0.002 molar of potassium iodate that you need. Both are fine. It doesn't really matter. It's uh, The main thing is you need the concentration of the potassium iodide to be significantly uh, smaller than the potassium of the potassium iodide, the Ki solution. That's the main, main idea. All right, so going to the actual experiment, here is a nice picture. Reference it. Picture's worth a thousand words. Here it is. Solution of KiO3 right near Barrette. And here it is. Your food sample, which is your ascorbic acid or your peach in this case. 
added with the KI, HCL, and starch, and they do tell you in this section how much you need, and they kind of summarize it perfectly for you. Five mils of KI, four mils of HCL, and three mils of starch solution. Um, but then how much of your peach solution do you need? It's looking like 10 mils of solution is uh, what they're asking for. So um, you're gonna have to do two, two titrations. One is with the peach, I'll do that second. And the other is with your standard ascorbic acid solution uh, right here. And they say five mils, so you're gonna wanna double that so that you're comparing 10 mils with 10 mils. You're comparing, well, I was gonna say you're comparing apples to apples, not apples to oranges. But in this case, you're comparing peaches with peaches. All right, so here it is. This is your workbench, your lab table. It's not nice like the, the black ones that we have, but it's good enough. So what we are going to do, see, we are going to start with our glassware, and this is a titration, so we definitely need a burette. Um, it's an other. It took me a while to figure that one out, so... I don't know why they just call it barrette, but that's what they do. We got 250 flask, and I want to make my potassium iodate solution. And unfortunately, it's solid form, so we have to make our own stock solution. So what I have decided to do is, I'm just picking this lab, and let's say... 0 0.002 molar is what we want for our stock solution. All right, so we got 0 0 0.00. Okay, I forgot how many zeros. How many? There's two zeros. Two zeros. Okay, there it is. Two. So we got 0 0 0.002 molar KiO3, and we want to figure out what is the uh, mass of KiO3 that we uh, want to be working with. All right, so we got molarity equals X moles over, let's just say 100. So I'm going to do 0 0.1 liters, which is the same as 100 milliliters. Multiply it out, I've got 0.0002 moles of KiO3 so you'd have to look up the atomic mass and multiply it by that they do save us some time in this lab and they say that the oh they don't say it here hmm they do KiO3 um 321 let's just double check that i don't trust it Iodine is 126.9, 126.9, IO3, and we got plus 16, plus 16, which is the atomic mass of your three oxygens, um, and then 39.1 is potassium, 214, all right, I thought that was kind of fishy. Not sure what that is. Maybe that's the total sample in their their box. Okay, it's always good to double check. 214. Show you what I'm writing. 214 grams per one mole. And uh, we multiply it by 0 0.002. I don't have my actual calculator with me. One, two, three, two. 0 0.0428. 0 0.0428 grams of KiO3 is what we are dealing with. I wrote it down right there. 0.0428 grams of KiO3. All right, moving on. <coughs> I'm going to take my KiO3, and I said that it was 0 0.0, 0 0.0428, and I'm going to press pour. And as you can see, it equated it to the volume, not the mass, which can be confusing, but we'll go with it. Click the X, 
put that in the corner because I don't need that. And now I got to remember this has my KO3 in it. And remember how we said that we wanted 0.1 liters, also known as 100 milliliters. So I'm not going to add 100 milliliters of water to this. I'm going to add enough water to it until I have 100 milliliters. Um, otherwise, I would have a diluted concentration. All right. Hey, there's my H2O distilled water. And I'm going to... Oh, and in order to pour, I, I got to put what I'm pouring on top of what I want to pour it into. And it, sometimes it's wonky and clunky and this is not working for me right now. I'm not... Okay, there it is. Yeah, so you, it's weird. So if it's not working, just got to try putting it in different spots and eventually it'll work. Um, all right, so 100 minus 0.01. Uh, it's, you could either plug in the calculator or figure it out. I'm going to do 99 point, what is this, 8, I'll just put that, I'm going to pour that, I got 99.89, alright, I'm going to add some more, 0 0.11. And well, uh, I'm at 100. So I'm going to X out of that, put this in the corner out of the way. And here is my potassium iodate solution. And why don't we just pour it into the barrette? And the barrette has a max of 50, I'm assuming, because it says 50 milliliter barrette. So I'm going to fill it all the way to the top. All right. And this thing's in the way. Here we go. There we go. Oh, let's X that out. Yeah, it's a little putsy, but so is uh, the actual laboratory. So I'll put that out over there. I don't need it right now. And there it is. So now I'm ready to make my sample with the potassium iodide mixture. All right, so. I'm going to need some more glassware, like an Erlenmeyer flask. I like going with 250s. And we need to add our solution of Ki. Now, how do I know how much to add? i got to go up here. How much was it telling me? 5 mils of Ki. Okay. 5 mils of Ki. I'm going to add it to my empty flask and write 5 mils. And I'm going to press pour and exit out. I'm done with that. And now I'm going to need my hydrochloric acid act as the catalyst. It says 4 mils of HCl. All right, 4 mils. Go to my stock room, solutions, HCl, 2 molar. There it popped up. And I need 4 mils of this. Out. And notice how my volume increased. It records that I got 5 and 4. That's my 9. That's going to be really important because when you do this again, you might forget the steps. Because um, eventually I'm going to have a 22 milliliter total. All right. And then the third one is 3 mils of starch solution. 3 mils of starch. So I got to go down. Get my starch solution. Oh, my workbench is full. It's too cluttered. Well, I don't need the HCL, so I'm going to right click and press remove. There we go. I'm going to get rid of this. Remove. I'm going to get rid of this. Remove. All right. And now I got room for my starch, and I wanted my three mils. Three mils. I'm just going to put this. I'm going to put my face over here. There we go. There we go. What else? Oh, we got to do the actual thing that we're testing, the ascorbic acid. So this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with... Yeah, always in the way. Here we go. Um, okay. There's peach solution. And then there's also ascorbic acid. So this is my standard. So I'm going to do my standard and how much 
do I do? It looks like five mils, but remember the peach solution is 10 mils. And, it, and really it's whatever you want. It's your experiment, just as long as you're comparing peaches to peaches. 10 mils, 10 mils, five mils, five mils. I'm gonna go with 10 mils, all right? It's, remember doubling, so that would be 20 milligrams of, of ascorbic acid. So when you do your calculations at the end, keep that in mind. So I'm gonna do 10 mils, all right? 10 mils. This is I'm pretty sure this lab is made for college students, but this is a college level class, so it works. Okay, right, then I press pour, and there it is. I'm at my 22 mils. It wouldn't be a bad idea just to write down you know, 22 mil sample. All right, move this out of the way, and here it is, time to titrate. All right, so this is kind of tricky. It took me a while to figure out how to get this thing to virtually set up in this titration. Notice how it's just very difficult. Oh, oh there we go. I don't know what I did, but it worked. So now I tried it with one mil, and that's... It's, it's going to give you poor results. It's going to say that you failed in your um, journey down here. Uh, don't look at that. So <laughs> I'm not going to be looking at correct um, answers, but you do want to get close. So I was close when I did try it out, um, but um, I wasn't close enough. So I, I think I had like 6.4. The, the correct answer was 6.5. But um, I was going quick. It was before nap time and so I would recommend going by 0 0.1 0 0.1 milliliter and you're going to pour all right it's now 22.1 we'll pour again it's now 22.2 notice how it didn't turn blue so I'm gonna keep on clicking 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 but the thing that I did was I went click 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 and then it overshot by I'm not sure how many and that's where my data was off so you might want to kind of just like real life titration go very slowly and and watch it and the minute you stop watching it is the minute that you get terrible data all right nice thing about videos you can just fast forward the boring parts but if you enjoy this here it is This would be a good time for a chemistry joke, but the minute I start doing that, I'll shoot past my point of titration. All right, very focused. All right. Um, oh, we'll do a knock knock joke. Knock knock. And then you say, Who's there? Uh, Dwayne. Then you say, Dwayne who? And I say, Dwayne the bathtub. I can't swim. <laughs> or I could say, Dwayne, Dwayne the barrette. I can't wait till it's done. Wow, this is, hopefully this isn't just a prank on me. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should just pause this video and spare you the, the agony. Okay. I overshot it by one so I'm going to subtract 0.1 all right so I have 41.1 essentially so I'm going to just record 41 all right 
So I've got 41 milliliters, but remember we said 22 milliliter sample, so I gotta subtract 22. So that's 32, 42, is that 19? So it's looking like 19 milliliters, and that's pretty good because that's what I got last time. Um, all right, so we're gonna hold on to that. All right, so I'm gonna keep this over here, and I did my standard. So now I'm gonna do my peach, and it's gonna be the same thing. All right, so let me just get, well, actually, no, I already made my solution. Look at that, 50 mils. So I'm gonna keep that. Um, let's just get rid of this water thing. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to fill this barrette up. Let me just make sure I'm filling it with the right one. Yeah, it's not labeled, unfortunately. In real life, we would label it. Shame on this virtual lab. Um, but this is the potassium iodate solution. And I have 39.9. Let's just raise it all the way up to the 50, which would be um, 2019.1. 19.1. Hopefully my math is right. Yes, I'm good at math. All right. That's over there. We filled our barrette up. Now, let me get... Oh, I'm in a way again. Okay, let me put myself down here. Stock. And I need another Erlenmeyer flask. There it is. And I'm going to need my... Um, I don't need this. This is my ascorbic acid. Don't need that. But I do need my Ki. And if you remember from the directions, it was five milliliters. Plop that in there, five milliliters. Pour it in, wham, done with the Ki. And now I'm going to go for my HCl. And the workbench is full. No, it's not, but all right, we'll go with that. All right, HCl. And we are going to pour in four milliliters of this, according to the directions, the same directions as before. Okay, I got it in there. Move this out of the way. I need my starch. And I'm going to need three milliliters of this. Pour that in. I got my 12. And now I'm going to need my peach. I'm in the way. Let me, let's try putting myself over here. There we go. Peach. I'm going to put it in here and we want 10 milliliters. Why? Because in our standard sample we had 10 milliliters. So we need to compare peaches with peaches. 10 milliliters. There we go. And now I'm ready to titrate again. Let's see. Hey, voila. First time. And I'm going to do 0.1 milliliter just like last time. And I'm going to pour. Now I'm at 22.1. Doing another one. And we keep on doing this until it turns. All right, let's do another joke. What did one titrant say to the other titrant? Why don't we meet at the end point? <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, now we're shot it by point 0.1 again. So we are at 28.3. And we'll say that's 28.2. So I'm going to write it down. That's, um, oh, I should have read, read this uh, standard. And we're talking about 28.2 milliliters is peach. All right. And we want to subtract the original 22 that we were starting with. That gives us 6.2 milliliters is 
our titrant needed. So that is done with the data collection. So right now we can do the math to solve for the answer to the question, which is how many milligrams of vitamin C, ascorbic acid, is found in a standard size peach. All right, so that's what I have this little equation up here for. My milligrams of vitamin C uh, divided by my volume of titrant needed for my known. This is my standard solution side. All right, so I have to figure out my milligrams of vitamin C for my standard solution. So let's get out of here and here. Then the solution equals peach, 10 milliliters. Okay, here it is. 10 milligrams of ascorbic acid in each 5 milliliter solution. Remember, we did 10 milliliters. So that's two sets of five, so also known as two sets of 10 milligrams. That's 20. All right. So I'm going to write 20 milligrams for every volume titrant needed. We said 19 milliliters. And you want to be in liters, that's fine. But then you got to be liters on the other side. Peaches to peaches. Um, all right. So the question is milligrams of vitamin C found in a standard peach. Mm -hmm. And we found that the volume of titrant needed for food was 6.2 6 .2 milliliters. All right. So now it's a little bit of math. We can cross multiply. We got 20 times 6.2. I'll just show all the work. Um, times 6.2 equals 19x. Divide both sides by 19. And you got it. So then you got to go to your little calculator. And we're going to do 20 times 6.2 equals divided by 19. And I'm getting 6.52. Six milligrams of vitamin C. Oh, you didn't see that, did you? So I wrote it down. I got 6.526 milligrams of vitamin C found in your standard peach. Right. Oh man, I'm ten, okay. Not great. I mean, here, let me let's. Let's do this again. Here we go. So this is 6.526. You're wrong, but you still have two attempts. Yeah, Forget about them. I'm close enough for the purposes of what we're doing. Um, oh, Scorpio acid. This one contains... So apparently they change their uh, concentration. They must have a set number of concentrations depending upon when you uh, log on to this. Because this one had 6.526, which is exactly what I got. Ah! I was right. I got it dead on exactly what they wanted uh, based off of this scenario. But when I put it in here, a new window, it is showing a different scenario um interesting okay so there we go and then what we can do is we can compare it well they say a medium peach contains about 6.6 .6. so it's going to be give or take 0.2 uh, depending upon the specific sample they got a wikipedia page to uh, give you that information because they don't give you that information until you actually answered it correctly or incorrectly um, but, and you have to scroll down, I mean, the, I'll show you, it starts off here, it's like, wh what, where are they showing me? Um, I had to read through all this until it's like, oh, here it is, uh, peach, seven milligrams per a hundred. 
and they probably just rounded up to the nearest whole number. Most likely, as you can see, they're all whole numbers. Uh, and there you have it. That's how you do the virtual lab. That's how you find how many milligrams of vitamin C are in, in this case, a peach. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. And enjoy the lab. If you have questions, let me know.